What is Heroes Week? And now we are talking to a hero on the ice, a hero off the ice, former LA King, Ryan Flynn. How are you doing today, Ryan? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Now, I remember you primarily from the early 2000s, is before smartphones, before social media, before hashtags, um, there were message boards. And one of the uh, one of the things on the message board uh, early in your career was the was fans calling to the media for to the excuse me to the front office to quote call up Flynn. That was a phrase that got repeated a lot. I'm just curious if you were even aware of that uh, back in the early aughts, as we say. No, uh, that's news to me. But uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for that, everybody. <laughs> So you broke in uh, to the NHL during the 2001-2002 NHL season. Um, you fulfilled a role that I suppose is sort of shrinking in the game today. You were an enforcer and a big one at that. Six foot four, six foot five. Where are you these days? I, I don't. I may have shrunk a little, but I call more on the six four side of things. Yeah, six four. All right, uh, but that mustache gives you an extra inch in men's eyes, right? That is an impressive mustache, I gotta say. Yeah. Can't do the goatee anymore, so here we, here we are. <laughs> well, it looks great. Um, I'm curious, though, uh, when when, and how, sorry, I should say the reason we have you on is you are now captain of a, of a fire team in uh, Surprise, Arizona. Um, at what point did you make the decision to transition from professional hockey to professional firefighting? So it was during my last year playing professional hockey in Rockford, Illinois with the Ice Hogs, and I, I was starting to realize that uh, my my career as a hockey player was coming to an end and I was looking for alternatives and I've spent a lot of time uh, throughout my career talking to different people in public safety a lot of police officers um, and then that final year I got uh, talking to a, a guy that was a volunteer fireman up, up in uh, Illinois and he, he just talked about his love for what he did and that kind of triggered me looking into it and uh from there uh, as soon as my season ended which would be my last season i jumped right into school to get my emt which was uh, a requirement and uh got into the testing process with uh, the fire department and i was quite fortunate to, by april of that following year to have been picked up by surprise arizona it's been a, a wonderful 10 years great experience so uh, uh, I love what I do, and I'm very fortunate that uh, I was able to accomplish that feat to get hired so quickly and to work for a great fire department. How similar is the process from, say, becoming a hockey player at the level that you were at to becoming a firefighter? Because I have known people who are trying to get into this program and to just even get their, their EMT license. It's not easy but it's kind of a journey what were some of those processes and steps like to get there well it's definitely uh just it's difficult it's a yeah. it's a trying process that takes some people uh quite a few years like i said and i was quite fortunate uh, yeah. how it all worked out but just to uh, go in there and to work hard and be humble and to just prove that this is what you want and it's it, it meant everything to me to, to, to get this chance to be on a fire truck. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a challenge and there are a lot of similarities that teamwork and, yeah. uh, you know, being at the station with the group of whatever you have at your station, whether that's, you know, a four person engine, or, you know, if you have an engine and an ambulance, there's more people. So, it's just a lot of teamwork that goes into it. And just, so it was a fantastic transition for me in my, uh, in my personal life to be able to move right from being a hockey player and having that team camaraderie my whole life. Like yeah. really what my life was, was sports and playing hockey to have that opportunity again for the, for the rest of my working life to be on a fire truck and be in a fire station and, you know, like I said, it's to be part of that team teamwork and then to be able to give back to the community. And um, it's been a wonderful experience. One team to another, Jesse. That's Pretty right. Cool. Yeah. Um, and with talking about teams and the framework of teams, you're a captain, um, obviously far more responsibility and a different kind of captain than a hockey captain. But I'm curious if you have been able to translate any of the lessons you learned in professional hockey into your role as you've gone up the rank as a firefighter. Yeah, you definitely like everything you've been through in your life, you, you learn from and grow from. Um, and definitely, 
that, like to go back to teamwork and th those lessons that you learn from whether that's uh, coaches or other leaders you had on your team, those are things that you try to uh, work ethic and um, determination. Those are things you try to and still continue to have yourself and instill in your um, uh, crew members. Uh, it's definitely, uh, I believe, an advantage just knowing what you have deep down when it comes to being able to push yourself. I believe that's uh, it's definitely a, an advantage. Going back to your enforcer years, somebody that you had a big impact on was George Peros, and he credits you to helping teach him the art of fighting. Hearing that, how does that make you feel? And, and what was the dynamic like between the two of you back in the day with the Kings? I think, uh, you know, first off, we were great friends. Um, you know, George came in, oh, I think it was my, maybe my third year uh, pro. So I was maybe, uh, I was going back and forth with Los Angeles and Manchester at the time. And uh, I think that one year, uh, we both had an opportunity to play for the Kings. And um, I think we both went through some injuries that year. And, uh, you know, that, that the timing of uh, pro sports and the way it works out, George had a phenomenal career and did really, really well. Um, I, it's been a couple of years since I've had the pleasure of uh, running into him, but you know, he had a wonderful career. He's a good friend and still is a good friend. And uh, you know, um, when you say that I ta taught him uh, the art of fighting, I mean, uh, it's a very much appreciated, but uh, you know, he did, he put in all that hard work himself to get where he got into uh, to achieve all his success. Um, it's just one of those things. So he, he did wonderful and I'm very um, honored that he would say something like that. He said you were always one of the first guys to say great job and you showed up and not many can do that. That's what he said that you would always tell him. And yeah. is, is the dynamic also like when, when there's multiple enforcers on a team, is it kind of like a goaltending situation where like goaltender number one, goaltender number two, and they kind of stick together and want to build each other up. Is that the same with enforcers? Because now it's kind of something that isn't so prevalent in hockey anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, hockey is definitely different today than it was then. And I mean, it's, it's like in every era. So it's definitely changed from where it was in the 80s and 90s when we played in the early 2000s um and definitely having one two three the more you had the, the easier that game was for you when you lined up and looked at the game sheet that day and you saw x team with three or four like legit heavyweight guys and you're the only guy that's you know, that, that meant a long night so your work was cut out for you <laughs> yeah so yeah. i mean having multiple so it was me george kip brennan so it was be able to have all those uh people there that have your back i mean we we're there for our teammates and along with that for each other so you now that's part of that battle um is showing up every night and being willing to put your body on the line for your teammates and your team to win. Ryan, no disrespect to Kip Brennan, but I had forgotten all about Kip Brennan until you said his name out loud. That's a, that is a, a nice throwback. Um, I'm curious about the transition uh, from hockey to firefighting. Um, you were an enforcer, as Carlin mentioned, and lots of, you know, big brawls. I can imagine that that would be the sort of thing that your family, your loved ones would have concerns about, you know, as far as your safety and you've traded that in for a job that's equally, if not far more dangerous. Um, how, do, how does your, you know, how do your loved ones uh, cope with this new uh, line of danger for you? I think they cope quite well. I mean, it's like we, like you said, it is dangerous, but it's a, it's a fulfilling career where you're helping your community, you're helping people through some tough times. And then, um, yeah, there's, there's dangers, but, you know, we have the best of the best when it comes to equipment, to training, to, to help keep us safe. Um, so with those things and then like your teammates, your crew members. So that's what we're, I mean, we're here to, for public safety, but, and there are dangers that are inherent in it, but it's, uh, you know, we try our best to mitigate those dangers with those things that I just said. You had a bobblehead made of you during your playing days. Any chance of getting a Captain Ryan Flynn firefighter bobblehead? 
Uh, probably not a, a <laughs> captain. I, I doubt it. But uh, there, I was just looking around to see if there's one laying around. And I is there one? Over there. Wait, you have it with you? <laughs> it's over there, yes. Go grab it. We got to see the bobblehead. <laughs> All right. Oh and we can there see we the go. jersey too while you're doing it. There you go. Look at that beautiful jersey. Yes, look at the jersey. Let's go. I'm making our guests work hard right now. <laughs> Can't mention a bobblehead and not see That's it. Right. Let's go. There, go. there we go. That is awesome. <laughs> Wait, you, you look the... exactly the same. You haven't aged a bit. Well, the look goatee at... and the and the mustache have switched places. <laughs> yeah. <that's it. laughs> wow. That's and, so uh, cool. We want to thank you so much for joining us. We've really appreciated this. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you uh -huh. very much. for. Please do stay safe out there. Yes, please thank do. You. Thank you. Thank you.